OT Help Desk video YouTube series. And today we're going to be doing the touch pressure threshold testing. Say that 50 times. Okay. But anyway, um, we are, um, as part of that, we will map it out for you. We'll show you step by step and give you some evidence and supporting information that goes with it. Um, with that, I'm Big J. I'm Little J. And let's get on with the process. All right, so we're back again and we're going to look at touch pressure. So light touch is perceived, right, by receptors in the superficial skin. Think about this now. So pressure uh, or deep pressure is deeper touch. So that's perceived by the receptors in the subcutaneous and the deeper tissue. So light touch is gonna to be responsible more for fine discriminatory hand use. And deep pressure becomes that form of protective sensation. So touch pressure is good for things like nerve compression, like if you're looking at carpal tunnel or if you're looking at a specific ulnar nerve loss, um, in, in a peripheral nerve, the two main areas that we commonly test, Joseph, what are they? <laughs> I, just so, put, I just put Joseph on the spot. He did. Uh, I'm thinking two-point discrimination. That's one. And then touch pressure. Yes, sir. And that's important to know, right? Because in the CVA, in a person with a stroke, it's a central, right, nervous system. So logically speaking, because the information has to be processed, we're looking at stereognosis, right? And we said localization, proprioception, and, and kinesthesia are ones. So, make sense? It does. Okay, so light touch pressure, okay, uh, like in terms of awareness, has to be intact, okay, for two-point discrimination to be tested. So remember this, if, if light touch pressure is impaired, it's logical not to test two point discrimination because you're not, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. Right. So, so, and, and the idea behind that again is, is, um, you know, in terms of, in terms of the ability then to perceive the pressure you're, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, the monofilaments themselves, they won't feel it. Right. So, um, so Joseph, how many monofilaments, okay, are used in the full SEMS Wines team? So there's normally 20. There's normally 20, okay. Um, how many clinics, outpatient clinics, use the full SEMS Wines team? <laughs> uh, I would guess not a whole lot. <laughs> I'm guessing not a whole lot either, because I I know the Sam's Weinstein, and let me let me actually let me show everyone the Sam's Weinstein. The Sam's Weinstein looks like this. Okay, that's it, and you can see the colors. Okay, starts with green, then it goes to blue, then it goes to purple, and then it goes to red, and there are categories. So there are five categories to it. And you can see the colored pencils that they use because they give you a diagram of the hand. And then you obviously you go through the process. So we're not going to, we're not going to discount the fact that that is a wonderful type of a test. Okay. But what we're going to suggest is, is that we use these, this is a five test kit and I'm going to explain each of the numbers and how they work, okay, as part of this process. So this is the one that's used primarily in most outpatient centers. And the only reason for that is based on the amount of time that it takes to do a sensory test. So when you, when you get down to it, the colors, the colors are coded for a reason, okay? And that's what makes sense. In, in, uh, they call this, and for testing purposes, they would call this the abbreviated form, okay? And that has five. Now, how does that work? Well, when you go to test, you're going to take the monofilament, okay? And it begins at the level of what we call 1.65 on the, the one for 20, okay? 
and it goes from it goes from 1.5 to um, 2.83. And I'm going to pull these out and show you what each one looks like. So this is 2.83, and just to give you just a little bit, I'm going to try to move this around so you see it. You can see it against the table what it looks like. It's very very thin and. Joseph's going to hold that up and you can see how thin that is. Okay, so the one that's at 1.65, you can't hardly even see it. Okay, so this is pretty light. So that's that's the um, 2.83. And then the next one is going to be 3.61. And that's 3.61 right there. So it's a little bit heavier, as you can see. And we'll talk about what that means at 3.61. Okay, the next one is a 4.31, okay, and there it is. You can see they get a little bit heavier, and even, I think this camera makes it even seem a little bit heavier, but that's that's the next level up. And then you have a, a uh, 4.56, which is even heavier. And then the final one, okay, is what we call, look at this, this is the mother load. And that's a huge one. And that's a, that is a 6.65. So what's that mean, right? In terms of these testing, okay, we are going to look at those five levels. So normal, and I'm going to do a normal light touch on Joseph's non-affected hand, okay? And we're going to begin with a um, 2.83, which we showed you. You may or may not be able to see this from there, but what I'm going to do now is, is the process of the test is for me to take this, okay, and for me to apply it. But what you have to do to make the test accurate is apply this, okay, for one to 1.5 seconds. And if you can see me bending it, okay, that's what you have to do. You have to bend it. I'm gonna use one that's a little heavier so you can see it. Um, I'm actually gonna use this. So this would be it and you'd have to, that's not gonna bend. Um, let's do this. And you can see as I touch, I bend. And I hold for 1.5 seconds, okay? Now they tell you, okay, over when you get to, um, when you're over the four, okay, um, that what would happen is, is, is you would test an area three times. So now I have done that. That's how we do it in the clinic. If somebody's missing, you know, I'll, I'll use the normal light touch at 2.83, the next one at 3.61, the next one is 4.31. When I get at that level at 4.31, what I've been taught to do in a clinic is to use that three times over an area that has a deficit, okay? So in a lot of cases, okay, and, and we'll, we're gonna just illustrate using, uh, we'll illustrate using 4.56 for Joseph. And again, here's here would be the test and let's test them. You don't test in a pattern, you can test all different areas, okay? Because there's a hand chart that it gives you and you would actually just note the color in the chart. That's what the pencils are for. So, in, and what I'm used to doing is this. When I have an injury like Joseph's, okay, I'm gonna concentrate in this area from here down, okay, on the ulnar nerve specific testing area. And I'm gonna do the discrimination between the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. And I'm gonna look to see, I'm looking for what, what the most important thing is, is that if, if I have someone that's below 3.61 or right at 3.61, according to the Sems Weinstein, when you are at 3.61, you have diminished light touch. Normal is 2.83. I have found that a lot of people are inconsistent with 2.83, okay? So it happens and it could just be because they they work hard with their hands, you know, they're calloused and things of that nature. And that's happened a lot to me. So I usually see 3.61 as being the, the cutoff, you know, and, you know, I don't really get freaked out 
about 3.61 if somebody has all of 3.61. Um, when someone is below 36.1 and now I'm at 4.31, which is the next one up. And by the way, I'm using these over and over again because these are common, these numbers. They're on every software package out there, okay, when you do your evaluation, because every place I've ever worked, they all have the they all have these listed. And it says, you know, at 3.61, diminished light touch. So you have to note that for a doctor. All right. And 4.31 is diminished uh, protective sensation. So diminished light touch is not as bad as you think it is at 3.61. Protective sensation is at 4.31. And that's when we know that we have an issue. So that's when you have to be really cautious and careful. So again, if I'm testing on the non-affected, I'm gonna come and I'm going to basically place in here and Joseph, you know, vision occluded would tell me if he feels it or if he doesn't feel it. So let's just do a couple of these, Joseph. Actually, we're gonna do, we are gonna do, just for the, for the sake of it, we're gonna do uh, 2.83, and we're gonna see what Joseph does. So keep your eyes closed, Joseph, and then you let me know if you feel it or you don't feel it. So Joseph didn't feel that, but I don't either at, at, at that. So let's try a couple other areas, okay? Let's try, keep keep your eyes closed. So Joseph didn't feel that either. And I might have, let me, let me leave it on for more than 1.5 seconds, okay? So let's do it. And I'm gonna go to another area. He's not feeling yeah. it. So again, interesting but that doesn't freak me out and it doesn't freak anybody out so now we'll go to the next one okay which is is three point uh three point six one and we'll see how joseph does with that so close your eyes joseph okay and let me know when you feel it you apparently felt that yes yeah I'm okay my thumb. so you got to keep your eyes closed okay and um Mid yep. first digit. And he felt it. So you can see the dramatic difference, okay? Middle of the Right. Yep. Okay, so so Joseph has 3.61. So technically, he's at the level of diminished light touch, okay? So, but to me, it's almost like normal because the time that I would worry is when I use 4.31. Okay, and he can't feel this. And we know that he's gonna feel it everywhere. He's gonna feel that every place I touch him. So I would put that he has, that he has, you know, some slight issues with, with um, sensation, but there's no safety risk. And that's really what I'm after when I'm doing my sensory testing. Now, if we've had, for example, if I've had an, a radial nerve injury, or uh, an ulnar nerve injury, and, and maybe it's a high level injury, okay? And I'm testing and they're having residual effects down into the, the cutaneous tissue, okay? It's a nice barometer to, to use to test, okay? But quite frankly, um, again, noting, noting that, that, uh, that if you can't, if you can do this, that I should be able to do moving touch and static touch, you know? then at the end of the day, you know, those kinds of things tell us a lot about where the nerve is and what's going on. So not going crazy here, but these five are the ones that are commonly used in the clinic. And you'll see, you'll see each one of these five, you'll see each one of them used. Okay. Um, so that is basically what we're going to use or what you need to use for touch pressure. Can you remind us of the norms for each one too? Yeah. So, so the norm, okay, for, um, and let's go by colors. Okay. Because it's, it's good to memorize the colors, it really is. So at the lowest level for normal testing is going to be green, okay? Um, and green is, is 2.83, okay? And that's normal light touch, and we talked about that. The next one is blue and that's 3.61 and that's considered diminished light touch. The next one is 4.31 
and that's diminish protective sensation. So that to me is the big one. If they can't do that, okay, then we have an issue, okay? So the next one is 4.56. And, and if they can't do that, that's loss of also protective sensation. So remember, the other one was diminished. This is loss. And then finally, um, 6.65. Um, if they're unable, um, they're unable to feel that, then ultimately, okay, it's on, they're unstable, you know, neurologically. Okay. You know? Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay, so uh, so this, you know, that that kind of is is how, you know, we do touch pressure. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, everyone. So we've taken the time to go through touch pressure threshold testing uh, one step at a time. And, you know, the information, keep in mind that the information many times over students memorize things. It's okay. You want to step back and you really want to start to apply it. And here at OT Help Desk, that's what we specialize in. We specialize in uh, learning, okay, uh, how to use information. So clinical reasoning. So, and as part of that, Joseph, what do we usually tell people to? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. So come join us. And, uh, you know, more importantly, come and join OT Help Desk, you know, and become a member and let us work with you and assist you through the process. Remember, we have thousands of questions. Every one of them has a rationale. Um, most of them are video rationales uh, via myself and Joseph uh, providing answers to the questions. And, uh, and in many cases, you know, we have other types of tests uh, that you might be interested in. And what about that liaison stuff? Yeah, if you want to find out how you can become an OT Help Desk student liaison and potentially earn a free gold guarantee package to the free. OT Help Desk, yeah. um, reach out to us to find out more. Well, come on, come and join us. All right then, everyone, uh, take care and thanks for being with us today. Bye-bye now.